This video is a beginner's guide to OneDrive. What is OneDrive? How do you set it up? How do you use it? And I'll also include some top tips on getting the best out of OneDrive. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards and I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. My IT company helps businesses of all sizes with their IT support and the cyber security. So what is OneDrive? Well, OneDrive is, is cloud storage. Google have a product called Google Drive. Apple have a product called iCloud. And there's Dropbox who have a product called, well, Dropbox. So OneDrive is actually Microsoft's cloud storage platform. So if you're new to cloud storage, what are the benefits you get from storing all your files and folders and important photos in a cloud storage product like OneDrive? Why wouldn't you just store them on your computer hard drive? Well, there are three main benefits to using something like OneDrive to store all your data. Firstly, what happens if you've got some really important data, so Excel, Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, important family photos, and it's all stored on the hard drive of your computer. And then one day, the hard drive of your computer breaks and you don't have a backup. You've lost everything. If you use something like OneDrive and the hard drive on your computer fails, you haven't lost anything because it's all stored in OneDrive. The second benefit of OneDrive is the flexibility. So if you've got everything stored on your computer and you're out and about, or you might be on holiday, you might not be with your computer, so you can't access your data. With OneDrive, you can access all your data on any computer in the world with an internet connection. You can access the data on your smartphone and even your tablet. Let me give you a quick example. Recently, I went on holiday to Greece and I wanted to hire a car. Now, I forgot my driving license, so normally I wouldn't be able to hire one. But because I had a scanned copy of my driving license in my OneDrive, all I had to do was get my phone out and show the car rental company the scanned copy of my driving license. I was able to hire that car. The third great advantage with OneDrive is geared more towards businesses, and that's its sharing capabilities. Let's look at an example. Perhaps you're, you're working on a presentation using Microsoft PowerPoint. How do you share that presentation with other people? Normally, people might just email it backwards and forwards with different changes. But with OneDrive, you can easily share a link to that presentation so people can collaborate on the same document at the same time. That's a really great benefit of OneDrive. So there are three great advantages of using OneDrive. But there's actually a fourth, and that is Microsoft actually offer a OneDrive product for free. They give you five gigabytes of storage absolutely free. So to give you an idea what five gigabytes of storage is, it might be a couple of thousand photos. So you can use OneDrive for free, and that product is the one that I'm gonna be focusing on in today's video. So without further ado, let's get into how OneDrive works. So the good news is, if you've got a computer running Windows 10 or Windows 11, OneDrive will already be installed. If you go down to the, the system tray here, OneDrive is the cloud and it'll have a cross next to it. And if we click on there, it's because we're not signed in. So the first thing you need is a OneDrive account. And so to get one of those, you can go to this page here. Now there's two tabs for home and for business. The For Home tab, you can see that there's a free account here and you can sign up for free. You get only OneDrive and you get five gigabytes of storage. Now, if you're on a budget, this OneDrive account is okay, but I would encourage you to look at some of the other Microsoft plans because for only £80, £79, £99 a year, you can get a family pack and you get so much more with that. You get lots of storage, six terabytes of OneDrive storage, plus you get all your Microsoft Office applications. But as I said, in this video, we're just gonna focus on the free account. So you sign up for free. What you will need is an email address. So that's either a Gmail address or a Microsoft account, and it will let you create a OneDrive account. Now, I already have one. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just sign in. So I'll enter my email address, and then I'll click on sign in. And it's gonna ask me for my password, which I will put in. This is asking where you want the OneDrive folder to be on your computer. So I'm just gonna keep this as default. If you've got loads and loads of data, then you need to consider this carefully because you don't want your computer hard drive running out of space. But I'm just gonna click on next. 
Now this next bit is a really good OneDrive feature. What it's asking me is do I want my desktop, my documents and my pictures on the computer hard drive to automatically sync with OneDrive. Now I know lots of people who always store documents and photos on the desktop because it's easy for them to access. In this scenario, all those files will be automatically synced to OneDrive. So it keeps them nice and secure. So I'm gonna leave this as default. I'm gonna click on continue. Now, because I'm using the free account, Microsoft want me to upgrade. So I'm just gonna click on not now on here. I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna click on next. Now it's asking me about the mobile app. So at this stage, I would go on to all your mobile phones, your tablets, and search the app store for OneDrive and install that. We are gonna look at the mobile app a little bit later. So if you've got that already installed, then you'll be ahead of the game. So I'm gonna click on later because I've got the mobile app installed already. Now OneDrive is ready. So I can just click on open my OneDrive folder and we can see that some things have started to happen. We've got a OneDrive icon here. We've got our desktop documents and pictures because in the previous setup, we, we wanted those to sync with OneDrive. And we've got some more status icons here, which I'm gonna go through later in the video. The next bit I want to look at though is showing the synchronization. So I'm gonna look at the online version of OneDrive. So if I go back down here again to my cloud, I click on the OneDrive icon, and what I can do is click on view online. That launches the online version of OneDrive. So you can see here that things have started to synchronize in. I've got my documents folder in there. Now I don't keep a lot of data on this computer. I use it mainly for YouTube videos. So you can see that a lot of my YouTube videos that were stored on my computer hard drive are now synchronizing up to the cloud. So they're nice and secure in the online version. Now just to show you a little bit around the online version, you can change the view. So these are are tiles at the moment, but you can have those in a list format. You can have them in a compact list format. You can change those things there. You can also sort them by name, file size, and things like that. You've also got a search function here. So if you want to search for a particular name of a file or folder, you can just type it in there and it'll, it'll search your OneDrive. Now, another great feature of OneDrive that I want to show you is the online versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So what's an online version of that? Well, if you click on the drop down here, you can click on new, and you can create a Word document, an Excel workbook, or a PowerPoint presentation. Now, I don't have Microsoft Office installed on, that, on this computer that I'm using, but I've got the online versions with my OneDrive. So if I click on Word document, it'll open the online version of Microsoft Word. So if you're familiar with Google, Google predominantly is browser based and they have their own documents and spreadsheets within the browser. This is Microsoft's version of that. So you get a completely free office suite, which is all browser based. Now, just a bit of a word of caution, from what I understand, it's not as advanced as the desktop versions. So if you're an accountant and you're used to doing really advanced Excel formulas and things, you might not be able to do those in the online version. But certainly for most people, it's perfectly okay. It looks just like Word, except it's over the browser. So what I want to do now is just go back to File Explorer to show you a couple of other things here. We can see our files and folders here in the OneDrive area. We've also got a column now called status. And in the status, we've got various icons. We've got a cloud, we've got these blue synchronization, and we've also got this green check mark. And I'm gonna start with this green check mark now. What does the green check mark mean? It means that the file or folder is available both on your computer hard drive and it's been fully synchronized to the Microsoft Cloud. So it's available in both locations. So why would this be useful? Well, say you're getting onto an aeroplane and you wanted to work on a Word document. Obviously, on an aeroplane, you don't have an internet connection. So it's important that a Word document is actually stored on your computer as well as in the cloud, or you wouldn't be able to open it. In turn, if you look at the cloud icon, it means that file or folder isn't available on the computer hard drive. It's only in the online version. So again, going back to this aeroplane example, if you wanted to work on this PDF in an aeroplane, it's got a cloud next to it. 
So if when you double clicked on it, it wouldn't be able to download because you've not got an internet connection. This is a really good design because what it means is that you can have lots of data stored in the OneDrive cloud. Maybe you don't use that data that much, but you still need to keep it. Rather than it taking up space on your hard drive, you can just keep it in the Microsoft cloud. And only the data that you're gonna be working on a lot, you can store a copy on the computer. So the other icon here you can see is this little blue circle. That means this folder is currently synchronizing with the Microsoft Cloud. I've just set up OneDrive on this computer. You watch me do it. So what's happening in this documents folder, it's a lot of my videos for YouTube. So it's quite a lot of data. You can see I'm using Camtasia. So that is still synchronizing with the Microsoft Cloud. It's still uploading. If we go down here to the system tray as well, we can see it's uploading 2.3 gig of 3.1. So it's not finished uploading entirely to the cloud. So that's what the blue synchronization circle means. Another icon we can see here next to this one here is a little person icon. That means this document is currently shared with someone else. Now I'm gonna cover, cover sharing later in the video but that's what this icon means. Now, when I've talked about files on devices and files in the cloud, you can easily switch between those. So this getting started with OneDrive PDF here, you can see that's only available in the cloud version because it's got a cloud there. Now, if I wanted that to be available on my desktop, I can either double click and open it, or I can right click and I can select always keep on this device. And if I do that, it's gonna download, you can see it's synchronizing now, it's downloading a copy onto my computer. So that is now available on my computer. I could decide at a later date that actually I don't need it on my computer anymore, but I want to keep it. So I can right click again and I can select free up space. Free up space, not gonna delete anything. It just takes it off the computer and puts it back in the cloud. Now these documents with the cloud next to them, they're just kind of signposts. They're not fully downloaded. It's just saying you've got a document here which exists in the cloud and it doesn't exist on your computer until you download it. Another icon that's not listed here so I can't show you is you might see a big red cross next to a folder or a file. The big red cross means it's having a problem synchronizing with the Microsoft Cloud. So the best way to get around that is to go down to the OneDrive icon, open it up, and it'll give you some more information of what the problem is. So hopefully you can resolve it that way. The next thing I want to show you is how to share documents in OneDrive. That's another great feature. If we go back to the online version, we can see we've got some documents here. Now, if I want to share this getting started with OneDrive, file or I can share entire folders but I'll just show you with the file it's the same process I'd simply right click on it and I click share and then I can send link so what I can do is just copy that link if I wanted so that is my link to that file if I just open an incognito browser I can send this link to anybody it's a long link and this is what it would look like at the other end so it would simply open that document for them it's opening that getting started with OneDrive. So I can share documents really easily. Now I can make it a bit more secure as well because um, sometimes security is good when sharing files. So I can click on this link here and we can choose specific people rather than anyone with the link. So going back to this bit here, sorry about that. We can just click on here and type someone's email address in. So we're only sharing it with someone specific. Other options in here, you can select whether you want people to edit it or whether they're just getting shared it on a read-only basis. You can set an expiration date. Now this has got a little mark here, that's not available in the free version. And you can also put a password on it for extra security. Again, not available in the free version. So that is how you can share files and folders really easily with OneDrive. So the next thing I want to show you is this folder here called Personal Vault. Now I've not created this folder. It's got a little safe next to it. It exists both in the online version and also on my computer here. So what is a Personal Vault? Well, a Personal Vault is a protected area of your own OneDrive. So if I click on it, it'll tell me a little bit more about it. So to access this folder, you have to have two-factor authentication enabled. And once you open the folder, it will lock again after 20 minutes and you'll have to re-authenticate 20 minutes of inactivity. 
Also, you can't share files or folders within your personal vault. You use your personal vault for the most sensitive of your data. You might have some files, folders, or other bits of information that you don't want people to see. So the personal vault is a really good place to put those things. If I show you how it works, I will go in here, I will try and open my personal vault. Now I've set this up already, so it's got my phone number here. It won't open until I first confirm the last four digits of my phone number and then enter the code that it sends me. So it's 132. Six and verify. Right, you can see here the personal vault is now open, so we can get in there. Something to mention about the personal vault and the free version of OneDrive. With the free version, you're only allowed to store three files in your personal vault. So if you've got lots more data you want to put in your personal vault, you have to upgrade to a paid version of OneDrive or the Microsoft 365 plan. Now, whilst we're talking about security, I really do advise you to take your security a step further and enable two-factor authentication. One of the great things about OneDrive is it's available from anywhere in the world. That's a great benefit to you. But if it's available anywhere in the world to you, it's also available anywhere in the world to hackers. And hackers will always try to access your cloud storage using devious methods. By turning two-factor authentication on, not just using your, your personal vault, but two-factor authentication on your entire OneDrive, you really reduce the risk of getting hacked. You can reduce the risk by about 99.9%. .9%. So you do really reduce it. So to turn two-factor authentication on, you can click on your initials, you go to my Microsoft account, and that loads this page here, and you can see the security tab here. So this is a security dashboard we want to open. So we click on there, and you can see it's two-step verification. You've got an option to turn that on. And within there, you've got various options. You click on two-step verification, turn on. You can link that to your mobile phone. I highly recommend 2FA on all your cloud accounts. Another important feature that you want to look at with any cloud storage product is the backup and recovery options. It's one of the great features about using a cloud product. You don't want to be manually backing up your computer at home or in the office. You want the cloud storage product to offer you some protection. So what does OneDrive have in place for this? Well, they've got two features. One's called revision history and one's just the backup vault. So let's talk about those in turn. Firstly, the revision history. Say if I've got a document and I make changes to that document, what happens if those changes were a mistake and I want to go back to a previous version? That is when you would use revision history. So you can see I've got this very simple Word document. I made this document, I made changes, I made more changes, but I wish I hadn't. Now all those get saved as revisions. So I can click on this drop down, I can click on version history, and it'll show me all the different versions of this document when changes have been made. So I can simply click on the drop down because I made a lot of changes eight minutes ago and I can click on this one here. Now it will remove the last change I made. So now I've got a couple of options. I can save as a new copy if I want to keep both versions or I can simply restore the old version. Now obviously this is a really simple Word document, but if you were using a, a complex Excel spreadsheet or a presentation and you made lots of changes, then the version history would come in really handy. The second part of backup and recovery is simply the backup vault. So I'll close this document here. You can see I've got document one here. So if I, by accident, I right click on it and I delete it, or I deleted it from my Windows Explorer, you can see that's just disappeared now because I've deleted it and it's synchronized. That has gone, but I've done that by mistake. How do I get it back? Well, we've got a recycle bin over here. Now this will keep documents for a period of 30 days. So for a period of 30 days, I can right click on that document and I can click on restore. That will then restore that folder back. If I go back to Windows Explorer, you see it's now come back. Now after 30 days, so if you leave it in the recycle bin for more than 30 days, then I'm afraid you've lost the document. So that's something to be wary of. Now the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to OneDrive is the OneDrive app. Now this mustn't be underestimated. You can have the OneDrive app on your iPad, on your smartphone, and you definitely should do. So what are a couple of cool features you can do with the OneDrive app? Firstly, photo synchronization. Now 
you might be like me, I take lots of photos. I've got thousands of photos on my phone. These are special events. They might be family holidays or gatherings. I certainly don't want to lose them. So within the OneDrive app, we can check a box, which means that every photo we take with our phone will automatically synchronize with OneDrive. So it will keep them nice and secure. That's a really good feature. The second really cool feature with the OneDrive app is it can get rid of all your physical paperwork. So you might receive letters through the post, you might have a stash of paperwork taking up space in your office. What you can do is you can use the OneDrive app as kind of a scanner. You can scan the documents and you can put them in OneDrive. So you can effectively go paperless. So that's it, that's an introduction to OneDrive. It's how to install it, it's how to get the best out of it. I would really recommend using a cloud storage product like OneDrive. I've explained some of the free version capabilities today, but if your budget allows, I would go for one of the paid versions. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you again soon.